and start pulling calcium again. If you have calcium nodules reoccur, it's probably because you didn't get enough product on that nodule area. When you do get it on there, it stops them. It's not a maybe, it's a definite. Welcome back to the Full Pro Podcast. A very exciting episode today as we are part of a new product launch that will change the game for builders and service pros. The revolutionary microglass technology that preserves new plaster, existing plaster, or decks and hardscapes. The one and only Alan Smith with Lauren Granstrom from Microglass LLC join us today. You don't want to miss this episode. to the pool pro podcast this is dave rockwell with michelle cavanaugh hey everybody and we're here today with uh alan smith and lauren granstrom from oxium llc they have an exciting new product and uh for plaster protection and uh we'd like to want to learn a little bit more about it but first of all let's kind of get some background um people in southern california are probably pretty familiar with alan uh yeah. Is a, is a very well-known pool plasterer. Uh, Lauren, uh, can we get a little bit of your history and your background, please? Uh, yeah, I was a um, manufacturer of pebble pool finishes. I was uh, uh, one of the founders of Wet Edge Technologies and um, been doing that um, ever since the day one. Um, and now I've stepped into a little bit different world. Um, one of the challenges I had it with the pool finishes is you know, always a lot of startup issues. Um, Pebble was a great product, but, you know, there was a lot of issues that were still with the cement. And um, and we've stepped into uh, this thing with the micro glass. And, and that's what's led me into this thing, uh, working with Alan. Nice. Welcome, Lauren. We're happy to have you guys, Alan. Nice to see you always. Good to be here. Thank you. So, Alan, uh, the Oxium and micro glass is a fairly new company. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Uh, Oxium Water Technologies, we'll call that the mothership. It's a um, uh, intellectual property uh, holding company that has some patented, um, we'll call it uh, molecular water reconstruction uh, hmm. that they've come up with. And uh, with that, there's uh, seven or eight different products uh, currently uh, have, that have been developed. And uh, from concrete hardeners to uh, fire suppressants to cleaners to uh, even um, uh, bonded ozone onto hydrogen for water treatment and swimming pools on and on. And uh, so a uh, micro glass is one of the products that was designed to actually uh, spray onto uh, Portland cement based products mm. uh, to resolidify them and make them super hard and all that. So that's kind of that structure. And uh, Microglass is an LLC of uh, micro uh, of um, Oxium Water Technologies. Nice. So <clears throat> you've been uh, testing this on pools. Is is the product available now? Uh, no, it's not. It's almost ready now. I mean, within a week or two, it's uh, we're having our you know Labor Day is supposed to be our coming out. Uh, mm. party. We have uh, Devin Cohen and Associates DCA as our manufacturing rep. And uh, we have it produced. It's being shipped. We're getting our distribution all set up right now, um, and uh, through DCA. And uh, we have, we have some we can direct ship to people if they request it. We haven't really put that big effort out yet. And uh, but it's it's imminent it's within the next week or two. Nice. So <clears throat> tell us a little bit about the product and when when is the uh, the time when we consider using it? I, I will say that. Uh, Alan has provided me with some of it and that we used it on a pool that we were acid washing and uh, we had some interesting results some great results with it but uh, Alan tell us a little bit more you've been experimenting with this a little bit uh, obviously more than I have okay well uh, let me give you a bigger picture of um, basically uh, the challenge we have so you understand how this works you know, my background uh, with the National Plasters Council is I chaired the uh, advisory board at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo's um, research. We had the 12 pools there. 
Uh, we did research for years and years specifically about the issues of um, pool finishes reacting uh, in that environment, the swimming pool water environment, and trying to take care of the discoloration, the etching, um, on and on and on, the durability factors. And we came to understand very quickly, uh, as with all cement products, whether it's concrete or precast or interlocking pavers or pool plaster, that there's a weak link in all Portland cement-based products. It's called calcium hydroxide. It's a very soluble calcium that's naturally occurring in that. And uh, even though we found out a lot of ways to help strengthen uh, pool finishes at Cal Poly with pozzolans and inorganic pigments and, you know, just different application methods that we're just doing to make things as durable. We always had that um, cancer of cement, which is called calcium hydroxide. So um, what we're always looking for is a way to actually be able to convert that calcium hydroxide or protect it or fill <laughs> a pool finish with something that is what we'll call it non-soluble, something that won't dissolve. Uh, water is a solvent, whether it's balanced or not, it's gonna dissolve things And swimming pool water, as you know, has acids and cyanarates and salts and a lot of things in there that are actually detrimental to cement. And so uh, what this product does is, uh, the microglass does, it's a very, very, we'll call viscous or penetrating product that has a silicate which is a known product, it's been around for a long time. It's a glass-like um, product, but we have it in a nanostructure, so it's extremely smaller than normal. Uh, this, in your mind's eye, think of a normal silicate is like the size of a soccer ball, and a pool finish or concrete is like a chain link fence. Well, if you put a silicate on there, it can't get through those little capillaries and holes. Well, we've made it to ping pong ball size, and we've had a viscous of the water to make it penetrate much deeper inside. So what you're doing now is you're filling the whole uh, microstructure, craze cracks, little any type of voids into the calcium hydroxide structure itself with a non-soluble glass-like silicate. And that's what this product does on either new installations or even existing pools that are five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years old, it works on those also. And that's oh, what we've created. Great. So this yeah. product is uh, is sprayed on after the plaster is applied? Yeah, right when you're done plastering uh, or pebbling after it's been acid washed and, and uh, you, you know, and then uh, you have to neutralize it. And then the, the product's applied on a very dry surface. Uh, on a regular smooth troweled plaster, you can put it on within, within an hour of the last finisher uh, you just can't put it on brand new smooth troweled colored plaster. Uh, you can put it on um, exposed quartz and pebbles that have been exposed to water. It's got to be water cured to start the hydration process of the calcium hydroxide. Otherwise, you have an instant reaction. But if you have a colored plaster job that's been submerged for a couple of days, you can drain it and put this on and it penetrates it. And you have to realize one of the big benefits for this and people are going to realize and the struggles they've had, even like with Lauren said, even in the pebble industry, they struggle is with um, maintaining the color. The uh, pigments themselves are very, very minute particles. And when the pool water starts to dissolve calcium hydroxide out of the surface, if it's got a pigment in there, it takes the pigment molecule with it and you have color loss. And then that's why you get dark pools turning those lighter grays or starting to lose that uh, around the pig, around the rock itself. You see the uh, color loss or it starts to fade. And if anybody's chipped away a little bit of pebble, you'll see that the surface is maybe, oh, the thickness of a playing card is much lighter and underneath is the original color because that's where the water has actually pulled the, the uh, pigment out. And, and on white surfaces, basically um, a, like a white plaster or anything smooth, when that water gets into that top surface and pulls the calcium out, you start to get the spalling. You see that potato chip thin flaking on steps and floors and wherever because the calcium has been pulled out. And what this mm -hmm. product does, it solidifies that so that reaction can't happen and uh, you don't get that spalling. Or I don't say it eliminates it, but it greatly, greatly reduces um, the effect. Um, I almost to the point I can say it, it eliminates it, but there's still those one offs. Same with the calcium nodule effect, mm -hmm. which you've been experienced on the pool that you did, I think. Right. Yeah. 
Tell us a little bit about nodules. Um, what causes them? And, and uh, I'll let you tell us, as you told me, how the best cure for them. Well, uh, we have a video series on calcium nodules on the MPC website where John mm -hmm. Dongel uh, from Pebble Tech and I do that. It's not a uh, quick conversation. <laughs> basically, uh, there's a couple different kinds of nodules. Uh, it's basically water dissolving soluble calcium uh, through an intersection, an ITZ interfacial transition zone, a spore, a craze crack, where the water can get to a reservoir of calcium and starts to dissolve it and pull it out in mass, and it creates a little, looks like a barnacle. If it's on a wall, when it comes out, it trickles down. Gravity will, it has a little tail on it. If it's on the floor, it just kind of builds up like a little volcano. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a delamination where the plaster is not stuck underneath, that void where it's not bonded creates a lot of calcium hydroxide fills in that area. And if water can get to it, it creates a huge nodule because it has a big surplus of that. And you'll see a lot of times in delaminations, you have these gigantic calcium nodules that are just oozing out. Yeah. Well, our product really doesn't fix the delamination very well it can we've had instances where it actually has gotten down in there and solidified it and stopped it i'm not going to advertise it as that i think it's a it's a good possibility you can help that but where we really shine is on a pool that has water just pulling calcium out of sound a sound pool finish and that <clears throat> our product gets in there and solidifies the calcium either in the avenue or the little spore it's getting in there and underneath that uh, it's um, it really cuts out that route and makes it very very difficult for that nodule to come back. We've got a whole bunch of pools we've done where some of these pools have thousands of nodules on them, and uh, we sand them off, acid wash, neutralize it, put our product on it. We might get two or three come back over a year, maybe a couple. Wow. It used to be they would all come back, and so I think that's a success. And they sand off, and the ones we've sanded off so far haven't come back, and. Um, and I know Lauren has seen that too. And uh, so we're really excited about that. It cures that, it holds color in, you know, it's, it slows or stops the spalling and the spot etching. And the, what we're really excited about on the startups of the, of the smooth trial plaster jobs, you're eliminating 90 to 100% of your plaster dust because the water, new filled pool water, even with low calcium hardness, can't dissolve the calcium hydroxide out of the surface and create plaster dust. And so your startup um, effort is completely changed, um, completely. And we have big Olympic pools we've done. And Lauren was on one we did where we did a about a 4,000 square foot pool. Um, it was like a, a 50 by 75, eight feet deep. Had a waiter next to it. And it's on our website, on the Microglass website, where we filled the pool with a fire hydrant. We had a waiter next to it. And we put Microglass on the pool, but not on the waiter. And the pool was filled with about 100 parts per million calcium hardness, which is normally detrimental to a pool finish because it's so right. low. You want and we came back the next day, and uh, the, the, the wader was filled with the same water, but it had untreated plaster. And the water in the pool still had 100 parts per million when we measured it of calcium and zero plaster dust, zero. We looked at the waiter wow. and the waiter, the waiter had about three eighths of an inch thick plaster dust and the calcium hardness was already over 200 within a day. So that water went right to work on that very soluble calcium and it formed, uh, it took it into the water and formed plaster dust, which weakened the pool finish. So uh, our startup guy was there about an hour and a half rather than the normal eight to 10 hours to start a pool like that up. And the pH was immediately stabilized. So we came back the day after that. It was at 7.6 where he left it. And uh, it's on the video. And, and that's very, that's common. That's what you expect in all of our finishes with this product applied. That's fantastic. So, yeah. And, and when you leave that calcium hydroxide in the plaster, it's going to obviously, the plaster is going to last longer. It's going to stay stronger. You're, you're pulling strength out of the, the plaster when, when you lose that calcium. You're making it extremely porous and you allow for water to get inside and start etching more calcium because it has more avenues to get in there. And, you know, I think uh, this was really, we're excited about that from the pool plastering standpoint to put on when it's new. And, you know, we've obviously targeted that and got a tremendous amount of interest. But I think 
the big winners in this are going to be the service community. I, I really do. I think they'll probably end up because there's how many pools are in the ground now compared to being put in new. Right. And, and, and any service guy uh, or gal out there, whether you're an acid wash company, a pool <laughs> service, even a tile descale scale company, you have an existing pool that's still in fairly good shape or even if it's struggling a little bit. We just did a pool the other day where cyanuric level was over 600. Service guy just was using tabs nonstop for years. Had so much algae and scale on there. We cleaned it all up and we sprayed our product on there. It looks like brand new. So whether your pool's in that kind of distress or just a normal older pool that's got five, six, seven years of water and then you need to drain your pool to refresh it, do a very light wash to get all the calciums and anything off the surface because you need a raw surface for this product to go in. And you spray that on your pool, you're going to, number one, reduce a lot of wa your water chemistry. And your customers get to get an extra, who knows, 10, 15, 20, 30 years on this pool finish because you've created a non-soluble pool finish. You don't have to reapply this. Once this goes inside, it's permanent. And so he creates a tremendous amount of value for his customer by holding the color, making that finish last that much longer. And you can get a lot of value because, you know, we're charging a substantial amount on this. You know, we're making a thousand bucks on each one of these and acid wash. You might make three or 400 bucks, but you put this on, it's a tremendous revenue generator for everybody. You can make a business out of this. And there's how many millions of pools, commercial right. and residential, in the United States, so this could benefit every single one of them. And uh, not only that, but this also works on the concrete around it and on interlocking pavers. And I know uh, the folks that are listening to this, who uh, anybody has like, especially a commercial pool where the water, people get out of the water, uh, the steps and wall and the wall steps, the swim outs and all that, where they walk around, where that water runs to the drains, you see a tremendous amount of degradation of the pool deck from the pool water eating up the surface of the concrete or the pavers and then they have to be replaced well this eliminates that too so you can actually put it on the pavers and the concrete and makes that non-soluble also and Ooh. it's not slippery it's a penetrator it's not a sealer so if anybody calls it a sealer it's mistaken it penetrates and solidifies and it's non-slippery if it penetrates if you okay. leave it on the surface it could be slippery as ice and you just have okay. to avoid that. And there's ways to do that. So, and so, service, uh, community, service community, I think, could be the big winner in this one. The um, where I see that degradation on pool decks a lot is with salt pools. It seems mm -hmm. to be pretty aggressive to Absolutely. decks and coping. Yeah, and Lauren's seen that too with all the pools they've done. Salt, so is is you know, salt's corrosive. Let's face it; they use de-icing salts and highways and everything and airports and that just destroys concrete and uh yeah but around the pool environment too salt water is nice for making chlorine but it's not good for the cement environment around it we did a uh, research in <clears throat> cal poly on salt systems and all types of uh, masonry products in the pool environment and uh you know it takes its toll on everything it really does and so a service guy can come in and just tell his customer about this he can spray it on his coping um uh, natural rock the decking and uh you basically got to preserve it and it's very very affordable so and he can be the hero um like for decks would that be more for for when they're new or will it if they started to degrade will it stop it from happening further what what's the application there yeah lauren you answer that one well the the decks um i think Probably the, the the newer they are, you know, probably the better. But the most important thing is that it hasn't had any other sealer on it or it hasn't had any other coatings on it. As long as it's just like the raw paper, the raw concrete, you know, this is good for any of them. Right. Especially and if you do, to answer your question, an older deck, a 20-year-old deck, you put that on, it'll stop it in place from getting any worse. You know, it won't restore it back uh, to uh, any kind of thing that has been etched out. But because water can't get in and dissolve anything anymore, it'll stop it from getting any worse and uh, degradating further. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks. Yeah, it does. Um, so on, on colored plaster pools, 
uh, which is, we did one that was dark gray. It was very poorly done. There were, the spa was full of nodules. There were several nodules in the pool as well. We had a similar experience that you described. A couple of them did come back, but for the most part, they've, they've stayed gone. Uh, but the interesting thing about the way this job progressed is the customer kept uh, adding little things and thinking of things while the pool was empty and the pool actually sat a little too long in the summertime uh, empty. And we had a lot of very visible cracks when we filled it back up. We were kind of panicking when we first filled it up because they, they were very visible, particularly like on the steps going in. But in about two days, they were gone. Um, yeah, was it colored smooth trowel plaster or was it a polish? Yeah, yeah, it was smooth trowel. Okay. So, um, yeah, the craze cracks are naturally going to occur. Every swimming pool finish has those, whether you see them or not. Right. It just depends on the size. And, of course, uh, the longer a dark finish sits in the sun and uh, it'll start to, uh, you know, dry it out and those cracks will open up. And so basically what the, uh, what the uh, micro glass does, even on brand new or older, especially on brand new, it fills the micro crack structures with a silicate, but it doesn't allow more water in. It holds the water that's in there there so it doesn't migrate out and cause more shrinkage. And so it arrests it. And um, what you saw on yours is when you sprayed that um, micro glass on there, it entered those uh, small craze cracks and the calcium hydroxide that naturally fills those in when they cure and completely restructured it with a silicate and then um, when it filled up it just what you saw after a couple of days is completely filled in craze cracks with a silicate the only problem is is if that stays unfilled for very long water chemistry gets in there and starts to etch it and pull color out and you'll see a lot of times you'll see um, craze cracks that are highlighted white Mm -hmm. water's been able to get in there and pull out the uh, calcium which pulls the pigment molecule that's permanent once you lose it it's gone but uh what you get our product on there early enough it fills that in and it just stops that from happening and you're just going to keep that finish looking much better much longer and uh yeah it's uh it's a tremendous product it's almost too good to be true right um so you, when we talk about extending the life of the plaster um with microglass can can the pool be acid washed again uh after this has been applied two three four five years down the road if oh absolutely the uh you remember this is a penetrator so it goes inside it's not a sealer on the top so there's nothing on the surface that you have to worry about losing this is inside the cement structure so if you do uh, drop minerals out, copper sulfate, scale. Um, you remember now your surface is extremely hard. So when you put acid on there, it's not going to eat that cement up like it normally would. An acid wash, everybody's afraid acid wash could do damage. You know, it's right. going to start flaking my plaster. It's going to pull color out. Um, I mean, we, we, we've got experiments with these where we have like even interlocking pavers where we seal one paver, half of it with our product and the other half. Without, we put straight acid on that. Straight acid, not like diluted, but say something spilled out of the bottle. And the treated side basically has no visible appearance of acid hitting it, where the other side, aggregates falling out, you're losing color, cement's gone. So when you acid wash a plaster job, it's the same thing that has this on. If it was properly applied, it's going to have very, very little reaction because it is so dense and hard it really can't dissolve anything but the stuff on the surface. Mm -hmm. I've actually, I've about. actually, Go ahead, I've Lauren. actually had a spa that we we did about four years ago that was a commercial spa, and they had a continue. They had a problem with the pool service guys, like like <laughs> some places do, you know. Um, and it was a salt system, and it was way too big for the for the spa, and they they just continually were having problems with it. Well, we went in. We put a new surface in there and I actually put the micro glass in back there and, and they continually about every three months, they will drain it and they will wash it. And, and they even went through two different heaters during this time period. They've been through five, six different pool service companies and they would go in, 
and it was just part of their normal thing and it's still going today they would go in they would rinse it you know clean it and it still looks pretty decent today so it i don't think it makes it totally idiot proof but it, it makes it a whole lot tougher yeah it's, it's like you're running into the battlefield in a tank rather than just in your uh uniform your armor it armor proofs the finish right mm. yeah and is what it does so i mean and you know we have to find that fine line between uh, our claims being uh, market claims, realistic claims. Um, you know, we, we want to be as accurate in what this product can do as we can. Now, the product's been installed for over 15 years in Florida where it was developed. It just never got out of South Florida uh, because the gentleman that made it really wasn't in the marketing. It. He just uh, made it and some of the local guys are using it. And, some mm -hmm. of those guys did it on the renovations and the acid washes so the pools looked like they were just plastered yesterday mm -hmm. and uh, they swear by it and so i started monkeying around with it you know several years ago and beta testing it and i kind of know how to do that i get so much stuff at cal poly that i really learned a lot about testing and sequencing and mm -hmm. already did that already and so i ran it through my trials and uh, I think this is the first time I've really come out and endorsed a product other than a product a long time ago called uh, Silicone Shield, which is a water repellency product that worked really well. But this is different. And I've kind of jumped in with both feet on this where uh, uh, Lauren, who is a principal, he's Lauren is the principal is the managing principal of Microglass. And they uh, brought me into the Oxium family to help them get some of these products out to market. And once I realized what it was, I was all in and, um, you know, I'm kind of, uh, my company's running on its own. I have a really good management team and I'm all in on this one. I'm in, I'm actually the CEO for Oxium uh, Water Technologies uh, at that level and help them develop these other product lines. And uh, I'm just excited about the micro glass because I'm a pool plaster. I mean, I, I made, cut my chops in the pool industry. I love the pool industry. Right. And looking for this product to do this has been kind of the missing link. And uh, now we have it and I know it works. And I'm very, very excited about this for the service industry, the plasters, the builders, the homeowners are the big winners. And uh, so it's about time, right? That something, some technology, uh, nanotechnology with a very brilliant man that understands how to inject these products into cement that nobody's ever done before with patented technology is now available and it's uh the other applications are structural concrete restoration but that's a whole nother podcast right yep. so yeah <laughs> um, so what what i'm thinking after experimenting with with one pool with this is it may change the way that I think about and the way that I talk to customers about plaster. Um, we've all been all pretty much been about lowering their expectations of what to expect out of their pool plaster because in our experience that's that's what we've seen. Pool plaster on average I would say lasts about five to seven years and then it's time to start budgeting for for replacing it. And I've always known that acid washing the pool does some damage to it uh, in inherently. And so I've kind of put that off and as long as I could uh, and maybe not even recommended it, just told them to save their money and replaster. Um, a strategy with microglass to me might include talking to them about acid wash in the pool earlier using this product and then hopefully it'll extend that five to seven years out um it, it, it could be a game changer for is in, in my thinking well i think your thinking is exactly right and uh so here, here's how to look at this you know the weak link in pool plaster is the cement because it has calcium hydroxide in it it's the glue or the binder that holds the aggregate together and uh that's the first thing to dissolve is the calcium hydroxide the next thing to dissolve is the marble aggregate that's why people started going to quartz and then uh, because it was harder or, or pebbles but you still have that cement binder now if you make that cement binder and that calcium hydroxide non-soluble and you have quartz rather than marble white quartz, 
you basically have a pool finish on the Mohs hardness scale that's an absolute hardness of about 72. Um, that's almost chemically inert. So straight acid won't hurt it. So now you have a, I'm going to call it ceramic-like pool finish. I'm not going to say it's ceramic. It's ceramic-like. It's hard. So um, how long will that last? Well, if it's non-soluble, I mean, uh, the average pool we see here in Southern California that I'm dealing with, plaster job is, you know, that we're bidding is 15 years old, maybe. I see some that get shot in seven. I see some that have been around 30. But if this is non-soluble, and it can't break down, who knows how long they'll last. Right. I mean, right. We, have, we have 15 year old pools in Florida that still look like they're just put in that were regular plaster. So could they go 20, 30, 50 years? If the, wa if the water chemistry is really the thing that breaks them down and it can't react, um, I mean, this is hypothetical, but uh, knowing how I understand the product, if it's non-soluble, I mean, how long does a piece of tile last? Right. You know, in the pool, it doesn't break down. Now the grout around it gets eaten up because it's soluble, but the tile doesn't, you know, and you can get scale on it and mess it up and all that, but the tile always looks good underneath. And so we're creating a surface that is approaching that type of a hardness. And uh, so um, is it idiot proof? No, I'm sure you can drop a nuclear bomb on it and mess it up, but water chemistry wise, it's gonna be pretty, pretty forgiving that doesn't give you a license to run your cyanarates up over a hundred and have a bad carbon and alkalinity reading and run in the negative on the saturation index a long time. But uh, if you do, uh, what it'll do, it'll eat your tile grout out because that's the only thing that's soluble. And we've just seen the tile grout go back to the thin set because there's no plaster to dissolve anymore as the sacrificial anode. I mean, it can't dissolve the plaster. So it starts working on the tile grout. So when we install this microglass, I always overspray the tile grout too, and then wipe you know the product off the tile because it will it will glaze over on that. And then so we're creating this super dynamic environment. And uh, oh my gosh, you know that's we're seeing that job in job out. We haven't really had a failure. So uh, you know, Lauren, did you the market. did you have a comment, Lauren? I, th I thought you were starting to say something. Yeah, I, you know, I've just always told everybody that, you know, uh, pebble finish has obviously been, been history and, and those rocks been rolling around in the, the ocean since Jesus walked the earth. Those rocks, our weak link has always been the cement and, and, and you know, wh whether it's long, long term um, with, with, with chemical type abuse, whether it's a salt pool or I feel like I, I always just saw so many warranty problems and, and the startup issues, man, uh, you know, I, no matter how we try to educate to get people that are, are, are punching out these pools every day, I show up to these pools and the calcium, you know, is only 180 parts per million. The pool's a year and a half, two years old. And, and what I feel like this, this doesn't make it idiot proof, but it does give us an edge to protect that pool just a little bit more so that you know we can we can help that homeowner from you know some of the pools that aren't being done out there and i i just see this you know with everything that i've seen over the past 15 years with with, with all the pool finishes that we've done this is this has been this is a missing link and this is one of the reasons that i'm i'm involved with this right well Alan, that brings a, a point to mind that a, a lot of places where i see calcium weeping and nodules is in the grout lines of all tile pools. Uh, have you tried this on, on an all tile pool? Would you recommend it for that? Will it work with epoxy grout? Um, well, epoxy grout, this doesn't react with epoxies. It reacts with calcium hydroxide, which is in Portland based cement products. Um, yeah, if water wants calcium, it's gonna get it, right? So it's not gonna pull it out of the tile. If it can find a spore in a tile, it'll go through it underneath and get it. But uh, if you put it on an all tile pool, uh, I haven't done that yet. The challenge would be is this stuff will not permeate into the tile. And if it lays on the surface and dries, it'll look, look like frosted flakes. So you would have to be able to get it all off the tile as it permeates the grout. And so I'm sure it could be done. You know, I just haven't done that yet. Um, so it'd be a lot of wiping off and, and all that. And uh, you know, as it dries, 
uh, to get it all off because once it's on and hardens, oh baby, this stuff is, you know, it's like granite. I mean, this is hard stuff, right, Lauren? This stuff is hard, hard, yes. hard. Yeah, yes, so, sir. And one of the challenges we have, and it's going to be, you know, people are going to learn as they apply it that if you put too much on, you keep putting it on and on and on, and it doesn't pen it. We put it on to what we call the point of refusal, where it doesn't go in anymore. If you put it on too much and it sits on the surface and dries, it leaves that little bit of a frosty white look to it. And uh, you don't want that on a black plaster job or a darker pebble. Now on white, you won't see it. Um, our white plaster and white quartz jobs look like toilet bowl white i mean this is porcelain white they're the whitest pools i've ever seen but um if you leave too much of it on or enough on it'll leave a little bit of that but if it gets hard and you fill it with water if you try to get it off with acid you're not getting it off you're gonna have to go down and physically grind it off with a polisher uh, to get that off uh, which isn't the end of the world but i mean it's just something that you know will have to be addressed so you learn learn how to put in and uh but your, your previous comment about rethinking plaster jobs, this turns uh, plaster jobs into now a very durable surface again. You don't yeah. have to worry about them, you, you know. So um, all of a sudden, you know, now we have this product. I'm Absolutely. just worried about people. I'm just worried about people jumping into the colored plaster again. You still have your blotchy, streaky, modely stuff, which those are still going to do. And then you put this product on there, it's going to basically lock that color. The way that looks is permanent, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So once this goes in, everything's kind of locked up the way uh, uh, the way you just put it on. Uh, but after it's uh, cured out for a few days or weeks, if you were to drain it. Now, in Southern California, you can't do a color plaster job. Fill it and drain it because we don't have any water. Right. Right. So yeah. Spread on all our other finishes that get water cured either by a wand washing the slurry off the pebble or the acid wash and water and neutralizer. There's enough water on there to get that to the point where you can seal it on a colored finish. Um, it's just important people realize that. So, you know, but if uh, that's really the only limitation, you know, is that. And uh, yeah, so uh, we're just super excited, you know, to get this out there and start being used and, uh, and I know there's a lot of people in the industry that are excited about it that have used it already and a lot of good testimonials and service guys that have already tried it on nodule pools and just different things, uh, craze cracking, elimination, and customers are just thrilled. A lot of good testimonials. So, and everybody's a hero and it does no harm. It's a grass certified, generally regarded as safe. And you can brush your teeth with this stuff. And... Uh, so you don't have to worry about, am I going to hurt something? You know, right? right. It, it doesn't do anything. All it does is make it stronger. So, uh, right. So where do they go uh, to learn more, Alan? Is it microglass.com or what's the website? Microglassllc.com. Okay. And it's a very, very interactive website. And uh, Devin Kahn, DCA's phone number's on there if you want to call to inquire or start to order. Uh, distribution's just about set up and uh, you can go through there hopefully we can have all the big distributors carrying it we're just in negotiations with that that's always the fun part you know how many rebates yeah. they get back you know <laughs> how about this and that and shipping and freight and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff and right. and how come he pays more than i do or less than i do and all that <laughs> thing, you know, all that all that silly business, right? Yeah, um, it's when your passion project goes down the tube when you have to really deal with all that kind of stuff, right? Well, I have other people. We have talented people in our organization are dealing with that right now. Yeah, it makes and, sense. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and that's going fine. I'm just saying that that's just part of the business. Everybody it knows is. that, so. Right. But it's, uh, it's business is business. And uh, and there's a lot of talented people that are, 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 are in part of this with us now. We have some other industry uh, giants that are going to be coming in. I can't tell you their names now until they're yeah. all in. And uh, um, and so for some of the other products that'll be uh, influencing the pool industry, also the uh, water chemistry side of things, we can actually bond ozone onto hydrogen, as silly as that sounds, and create a whole different water dynamic with uh, ozone that doesn't off gas. And uh, we've got a lot of pools already in the ground from municipal pools to residentials and 
talk about game changers, even wastewater treatment facilities and fish farming and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a crazy technology this uh, gentleman, William Reed, came up with. And uh, the applications are everything that water touches, it, it changes it. And uh, it's like the internet or Apple or Google, but in water chemistry, what they have going about ready to start with this. So some pretty exciting products. I guess. Sounds great. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're anxious to hear more as, as uh, these things develop. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell us before... I would. There's one other part of this that I think is important, at least to, to Lauren and I and a lot of the principals involved, is one of the other reasons I got involved with this is because um, um, I'm involved with a lot of different charities. I'm in the part of my business career and all that. We're really excited about helping and giving back. You know, we've been blessed with a lot of uh, fortune. And uh, so part of what got me involved really after Lauren asked me is William Reed, the inventor called me up and he said, Alan, I'd really like to make sure that about at least 10% of all the profits we make from anything goes back to Christian charities or charities to help people. This corporate, we call it a corporate tie, they're corporate giving and from all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, from helping people in Afghanistan, what's that kind of stuff and all that. That resonated with me. Now you've gone from, you know, from success to significance in our careers. And a lot of the people involved with this, including Lauren, we're all in our 50s, 60s, and 70s. There's a seasoned businessmen that are getting into this uh, for this reason. They want to do something a lot different than just make money. They want to make money for a reason other than just putting it in their pockets. And yeah. uh, that's, that's our motivator, believe it or not. I mean, sure, everybody likes to make extra bucks. That's nice. And I'm not going to say no, but the fact that we have this organized structure of giving back, or even uh, with the NPC, National Plasters Council, we're going to put NPC members, every gallon they put, they buy, we're going to put something back into the apprenticeship program or to the scholarship program and do a give back uh, because, you know, our industry needs that. And just we need to think more that way and not so much for ourselves. And so that's kind of why a lot of us got involved with this is because the philosophy of this company is a give back company and i think that's important you guys know that because a lot of your audience thinks the same way there's just so much big corporate how much can you make bottom line and not a lot about how given back and i think it's just time um so many of our industry are already doing that we just want to do it too that's great sounds great love it alan love it love the passion behind it yep we do have passion Appreciate your time. Um, we all kind of got to get in the field in one way or another. So, <laughs> but I, I, I look forward to talking to you again, Alan, uh, as these things uh, develop. Uh, there, there's some some of the things, especially the water treatment things, I'm very excited about myself. So, uh, well, you know, and you experiment with it, and you saw how successful it was, and that's a powerful testimony. If anybody, any service uh, professional listening to this wants to know more about it, you know, they can call Devin Cohen. We can set up a, a rep to come and do a demo, a, uh, a presentation. I'm getting ready to do an IPSA meeting here pretty soon with a lot of uh, IPSA chapter presidents are going to be there and talk. Lauren does that and we can explain it, show it, go on the website and help them along, answer questions. You know, we don't want to be snake oil salesmen. You know, we want to educate them so they can make an intelligent decision whether they want to um you know participate in this new product or not and uh it's gonna it's gonna be a household thing here before you know it but uh but we're here to help and uh support any way we can that's great fantastic thank you guys thank you for coming on we appreciate it lauren and alan oh we thank you the opportunity. thank you david and michelle nice talking to you we'll, talk, we'll see nice you again soon A new voice in the industry, a resource for all, education for you. This is Pool Pro Podcast. Build relationships and share important news as we get ready for our next backyard adventure. Pool Pro Podcast, backyard adventures are better together. Please take a moment to share, like, and review our content with all of those that would be interested.